Second Kings. Let us now turn to the book of Second Kings, chapter four. I will try my best. Second Kings, chapter four. Um, from verse eight, it goes all the way up to thirty thirty-seven. But I'll skip. I'll skip. Verse 8, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. One day Elisha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Let me skip to verse, 20, 20, verse 25, and then I'll explain in the sermon. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there is the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with your child? And she answered, All is well. And when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet and Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, Leave her alone, for she is in bitter distress. And the Lord has hidden this from me and has not told me. Verse 28, then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? But Lord is in small, meaning master, not God. Did I not say, do not deceive me? And then we go to verse 35. Then he got up again and once back and forth in the house and went and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. One of the themes, in fact the theme for this year is revive. To revive basically is to restore to life. To restore consciousness. To resuscitate. To bring to life. To revive is to refresh. To revive is to energize. To revive is to renew and to stimulate. One of the things about the Bible is that the Bible is just not a book, but it is the book that gives life. The word of God is life. In the beginning, God spoke and he said, let there be light. Fast forward. Why did God say, let there be light? And then he created the sun, meaning that it's not only the sun that gives light. Fast forward again. Jesus says that I am the light of the world. In other words, when you have the sun, you have light. The Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet, my feet, a, a, a light unto my path. In the life that we live in, we will come to a point that we don't know where to go. David was using that term in a place that didn't have 
neon lights. They didn't have electricity lights. And most of the traveling in that time used to happen at night. So when David was saying, your word is a lamp unto my feet, they used to have ankle lights. And they never, they, they, they couldn't see like three meters where they know is. But one of the things that they would use, that they would do is they would walk in steps so that the lamp would light their path. And, one, and something that God wants us to do is we have to use the word so that each and every day, whenever we don't know how to make our next step, he will light our path. And then it comes to a time that God prophesies to Jeremiah that the children of Israel will go to a time that they will be going through a difficult season. 400 years they were under Pharaoh. Under Pharaoh they had seen it all. And then God sends a deliverer. And then Jeremiah prophesies again. And he says that you are going to go into captivity because of sin. They had turned their backs on God. And Israel, after, after the, the first king, the first king was Saul, and then the second king was David. And then after, after David's son came, the, 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 the Israel, the Israel was divided. And there was the northern kingdom that had ten tribes. And the, 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 the people that led the, the ten tribes, they were wicked. And then there was the southern tribe of Judah. And the, 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 the ten tribes, the northern kingdom, went to a point that they were ruled by the Assyrians. You want to know more about Assyrians, the Ninevites. These were people who would impel you on a pole. And then God took or brought judgment to the people of Judah. This is the southern tribe. And the southern tribe had kings. The southern tribe had kings who were not only good, but people who served God. People who wanted to bring back worship. People who wanted to bring back people to God. Because they knew that Israel is my firstborn son. And there were prophets. Remnants would hear what the prophets would say and prophets would speak for God. And Judah was under the Babylonian reign. And then it comes to a time that you hear stories where people are in exile. People are in captivity. The story comes of a woman a Shunammite woman. Shunem was just a place. The Shunammite woman, the Bible says that she was a well-to-do woman. She was a wealthy woman. She had money. She had everything. In a world that people were under, the Babylonians, she had everything. And then she was discussing with her husband um, the man of God comes when the man of God will come let him eat and then she went ahead further because the man of God used to come each and every other time and she went further and what does she say she says why don't we put a lamp we put a room we put a table we put a bed and we put wifi so that this man can watch bad books. <laughs> Let us, so that when this man of God comes, he can put in. That is what other versions says. The man of God was not watching bad books. He was <laughs> going to put in. <laughs> to put in is just to rest after coming from ministry or coming from a place of prayer. And then the Bible says that the man of God used to go to that place and he would put in, he would rest. And then one day Elisha, 
The Bible says that he is a man of God. When you are a man of God, it means that you are after the things of God. You are after the things that breaks the heart of God so that you are speaking for God. This woman is called by Elisha through the servant. And then the Bible says that you have gone through all this trouble for us. Should we go to the king and intervene? Or what should we do when we go to the king to speak of you? In other words, I being a man of God, Elisha, I being a man of God, what should I tell the king, God, concerning you now that you have been of blessing to me? We also want to be a blessing to you. And then again, it means that the woman went. Then Elisha tells the, 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 the servant, Gehazi, tell the woman to come. And the Bible says that that time she stood at the doorpost. And then Gehazi is speaking. Elisha is speaking to the woman. Gehazi is speaking on behalf of the woman. What does Gehazi say? Gehazi says that this woman is without a child and her husband is old. This woman who has been of blessing to us is without a child and her husband is old. She is at a point that things are not possible. And one of the points that I can say is God will bring us to a place that he wants us to see what he can do because we serve the God of impossibilities. And then the man of God says, next year, a time like this, you will have a child. This is a woman who never asked for a child. This is a woman who never said, I want this and this to, 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 to happen to me. But she said, I dwell among my people. That is the only thing that she said. She was content. She was, she was, she was okay with where, where she was at. And one of the things that God wants to do this year, you have been serving God. You have been a normal Christian. You have been a Christian who just wakes up in the morning and say, Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for blessing my family. I will serve in church. I will wipe seats. I will serve in CG. I will attend all the prayer meetings. And, and, and I, I am okay with just that. But God wants you to move from a point that you are not just a normal Christian. God wants to put something in you. And it's, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing that this woman, she had a word. We live in a world where there are many words. There are many words. God is speaking this and he's speaking that. He is saying that you will be blessed. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You are more than a conqueror. Yes, but we need the word that God is speaking for us in this season that we are in. And Elisha said, you will hold a child. God wants us to move from just being people who serve. And that's why God will put something in you. This woman, she was called the Shunammite woman. The Bible says the following year at the exact time she had a child. She had a baby and her name changed from woman to mother when God puts something in you your name is going to change and I am prophesying today that from this day on that God is going to put something in you in each and every one of us because we have been coming to church and just sitting and saying praise the Lord church was awesome but God today is going to deposit something in you so that you will see things that God will do. In fact, God never created things to make sense, but he created things so that he will make faith 
in you. God created things and he will put you in places, things that you never asked for, things that you never, that you never even thought that you will do. But God is saying that I will put a thing in you so that you will move from a point of being normal to being someone who will do extraordinary things. And then the story continues. The same, same woman. Remember the man of God has spoken. The prophecy has been fulfilled. Her name has been changed from Shunammite woman to mother. The Bible says that one day the child started saying, my head, my head, my head, my head. And the father, who is old, the father was with the reapers, people who were reaping. And then what does the father say? Take the child to the mother. And the child was taken to the mother. The child sat on the lap of the mother and at noon the Bible says that the child died the child died and so the woman who even didn't need a child the woman who even didn't ask she only thought that I will just be a blessing to this man of God. I will just be giving him food. I will just be wiping seats. I will just be coming to church and attending CGs. I will just be someone who will attend all the front runners events. Whenever they need money, I will send. Whenever they are building a stage, I will give. And then this new thing that God has birthed in you, something that you never asked for, is taken away from you. It is dead. I remember in 2009, I was serving God, wiping seats when I was in Front Runners West. I was in church from Tuesday to Sunday. Whenever there was a wedding, I would be there and sing. I remember I would wipe seats because we were seated in a dusty place. I remember I would do everything. Whenever they would say, go and visit someone, I would go and visit that person. And then one day in 2009, God tells me, I have called you to be a pastor. I never desired to be a pastor. My thinking was that I just wanted to serve God. But God sees the capacity in you. God sees that you are able to do more. God sees that you are able that, than just giving. God sees that you are more than just coming to church and sitting there and receiving and receiving and receiving Sunday after Sunday. And God wants to put something in you. And then I joined Bible school in 2011. After God telling me that I will take you. And then 2011, after my first semester having nothing, I'm sent away because of fees. I'm sent away, no finances, nothing. All my parents are dead. My sister is in another country. There's no one to support me. When my dad died, our, our, our relatives uh, separated and it, it's like everyone is against us. So I am all alone. And let me take you back to this Shunammite woman. This Shunammite woman when the child, this thing, this dream, the God-given dream was dead. She knew where to take it. She took it 
and went back to where it was prophesied, where it was spoken. And she laid the child where the man of God comes and puts in. And the same, same woman went to the husband and said, give me a donkey and a servant so that I may go to the man of God. Some of us in the things that God has given us, whenever that thing is dead in quotes, we start having a, a, a burial ceremony. We start planning. We start calling people. We start looking for finances. We start wailing and we start going through the motions of life. We come to a point and say, this thing is dead. But remember, the God who called you, the God who said that I will do great things in you, he who began this good work in you will bring it to completion. He never put that thing so that you will do, do, do the things that man is supposed to do but he wants you to do things that only God is able to do and that's why the things of God never make sense but they were meant to make faith she goes to the man of God and as she is going the Bible says this the Bible says there is the Shunammite woman right there. Her name was Shunammite woman. And then it changed to mother. And then again it changed to Shunammite woman. Without the thing that God has brought into our lives, our name changes. Our name changes. And then Elisha sends the servant. And the servant Gehazi goes and she meets with the woman. The woman meets with the servant. And the servant asks the woman, Are you all right? Is your husband all right is your child all right three things the first thing now that you are associated with this thing are you all right are you okay physically are you okay emotionally are you okay financially are you okay spiritually is your husband all right are the relationships around you all right now that this thing is not there Is your child all right? Is the dream that God birthed in you all right? That's why your name has changed. Because some of us are having a funeral. Some of us are going through a difficult time and wailing. I remember wanting to quit Bible school. And then what does this Shunammite woman say? Everything is all right. Sometimes it's good to tell people that you're not all right. But there are some people that you will tell you are not okay. There are some people you will say, my relationship with my boyfriend is on the rocks. In fact, we have been arguing and cursing at each other. We have been speaking negative things. The thing that God gave me doesn't make sense. I don't have finances. I don't know how I'm going to go about it. I don't know how school will work. The, the relationships that I have with my mom is not okay. In fact, I was about to punch my dad yesterday because there's nothing that is okay. And the things that God wants you to speak to, to, to the, the person that God wants you to speak is God. You have to take that thing to God. You have to take your relationships to God. You have to take everything to God. You don't have to tell everyone the things that you go through in life. And she bypasses and sees because that is what she knew. 
She sees Elisha and goes and falls at his feet. And do you know what she says? Why did you raise my hopes? Why did you raise my hopes? Why did you take me to Bible school? Why did you give me this car? Why did you give me this job? Why did you put me in this relationship? Why did you open doors for me? Without that relationship, without that Bible school, without that job, I will just be a normal Christian. I will just be coming to church. I wouldn't have been dreaming. Why did you do that to me? Why have you brought all this misery in me? Why are you putting me in a place that I am crying over the things that you have given me. Did I ask you to bless me? In fact, I was blessed even way before you gave me this thing. I was the person who was serving you. Why did you do that? And then Gehazi goes. He runs to where this child was put. He tries to resuscitate. He tries to bring back the child to life. You see the results of when you tell people things. This dream that is dead, this desire, this job promotion, this relationship will never come back to life. But the Bible says that Elisha, the man of God, he went back to the house and he went where he used to put in, where he used to rest, where when he was tired, he would go and just pray after eating food and he would relax and he goes and sees a dead thing and what does the bible says he started to do a, a, a resuscitation progress he started to do a revival thing he saw that this thing that god had given this woman is able to come back to life this woman name's name was changed to, to from shunamite to to mother and then to woman but the god who called this woman gave her a new name and god i am speaking a new name this job that you gave me oh God I know that you are going to revive if it's not this job it's another job the desire that you put in me God I know that you were going to revive it and he started mouth to mouth and eyes to eyes he started doing things and the resuscitation process became final and this child his body started becoming warm and the thing that God gave you whenever you take it to the right place God is able to bring it back to life and the child was able to come back to life <clears throat> revive turn to the person next to you say that God is reviving God is reviving my prayer life God is reviving my relationship with him God is reviving all the finances that I have lost God is reviving the things that I have lost to the enemy I believe that God is doing a new thing people say that it was dead I may have started to have a funeral over it but God is saying I am not through with it yet God is going to do exceedingly abundant what I thought was dead God has revived it God has resuscitated it God has brought life to it my faith is rising I am soaring higher on wings like eagles I am going to do great things come 2019 I know my God shall supply all the needs according to his riches in glory because this thing that God has put in me God will provide. Today, I believe that God is reviving relationships in this place. I believe that God is reviving the things that you have lost. I believe that God is reviving the things that you thought were dead. I believe that God is reviving the desire in you to grow deeper in Him. I believe that God is reviving your relationship with Him. I believe that God is reviving the things, the things, the things where He took you, where He left you at. God is able to pick you back. God is able to say that I will provide 
provide school fees. You may have stalled. You may have tried other ways to get the finances. You may have tried other ways to do businesses. But God is saying that today I am reviving. Today I am reviving. Today I am resuscitating. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter about 2018. It doesn't matter about 2017. But in 2019, that which you thought was dead, that which you thought was dead, I am going to revive. If that is your word, I want you to start opening your mouth and tell God, this is the time that you revive. This is the time that you revive. This is the time that you revive. God, I am believing you for a miracle. I am believing you for a breakthrough. I am believing you. People may have laughed at me, oh God. In 2018, people laughed at me. I also laughed at my own circumstances. God, I thank you that 2019, I am starting on a revival note. I am starting on a high note. I believe that God, you are resuscitating, even though it may not look like it now. I know that God you have done it. I know that God each and every other day is the day that you have made. I will believe. I will rejoice. I will rejoice as an act of my will because you are reviving every step of the way. Every step of the way. You are opening doors. You are building. You are working miracles in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Make this place a place of prayer because we praise him with the fruit of our lips. God, you are going to revive. God, you are going to revive in the mighty name of Jesus. Just pray to him. Just pray to him. Just pray to him. I can see a shift. I can see a shift. Thank you, Lord. 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 My faith is in you is rising. My faith in you is growing. In the secret place, I will pray. I will pray to the Father who never fails. I will pray to the God who always cares. I will pray to the Master who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Father, I thank you. I thank you today, O oh God. I thank you. I am glad that I came into the house of the Lord because in you, Father, I may not have faith. I may not have faith to receive a word from you. I may be filled with negative choices, negative thoughts. I may be filled with things that don't make sense, oh God. Father, you may have spoken to me, oh God, concerning many things, but I just want a thing. I just want one thing. I just want one thing. I just want one thing. And Father God, I am praying in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Revive. 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 Bring back to life. Energize. Rejuvenate. Father, I am trusting you. I thank you for the new name. Thank you, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And so just to finish this story off. The Shunammite had gone through the motions of life. She had been given a child. She had celebrated. The child died. The child came back to life. My story, the same, same story. God paid it all. I didn't need to go to people. I knew the right place to go to. 
I knew the right place to go to, the place of prayer, the place that God spoke the word of prophecy, the place that God said, I have great plans for you. You have just been a normal person, but you are abnormal because you are better than just being normal. After Elisha, the man of God brought back this child to life. The Bible said that she took the child. I think it's Elisha who gave her the child. She goes back to the man of God and says, thank you. Thank you. God wants you to be thankful. God wants you to be thankful. Each and everyone in this place has been gifted. And because of the comings and goings of life, it doesn't matter. The Shunammite woman was at a place of exile. The Babylonians were running the nation. But she went back to the place of thanksgiving. Always be thankful. Always be thankful. Even when it doesn't look like it. I can't say that my journey in Bible school was easy. But the voice that spoke over me is able to bring it to completion. And I remember the day that I graduated, July 11th, 2014. I went back and said, God, thank you. I said, thank you. My faith has risen. I can now trust you for bigger things. I can now trust you for more. I can now trust you that I can write a book. I can now trust you that I can write I can drive a car. I can now trust you that I can go to hospitals and pray for people that they will be healed. I can now trust you that God, you are the God of exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ask or think. Your word is true and your word is final. God has so much for each and every one of you. God has already released. Now it's your part. There are some things to be taught and there are some things to be caught. May you catch this word and run with it and you will see what God will do. He has revived. Let us bow down our heads as we come to the end. With all eyes closed, You want to say that, Lord, this year I want to start with you. I have a lot of challenges. Just lift up your hand. Thank you for those hands. Just be honest with God. Just be honest with God. Just lift up your hand. Father, you see those hands. Father, you see beyond the hands and you see their hearts. We are speaking your word today. You who began this good work in them, you will bring it to completion. 
And Father, today may they be energized. May they be revived. May they never be comfortable. May they never settle for less. Because Father, you have called them to far greater things. We thank you, Lord God. The second Lord I want to pray is, still with our heads bowed and our eyes closed, you're saying, Lord, I want to have a relationship with you. Just lift up your hand. God, I am giving my life to you today. I am coming. I want to be made new. I want to be a new creature. The Shunammite knew you. And I also want to knew you, to know you. Just raise your hand up high. It's your personal relationship with God. It's you and God. It's you and God. It's you and God. I am believing. I am believing that God is doing something in you. Just lift up your hand. The leaders that we have in front runners, I just want you to look at the hands raised, still with our heads bowed. Just look at the hands raised. Look at the hands raised. Just lift up your hand. Just lift up your hand. Thank you, Lord God. I want you to repeat this prayer after me and say, Lord, I come to you as a new creature. I am giving my life to you. The old has gone and the new has come. Surround me with your love. Surround me with your promises. I pray that you bring people who will take me through this walk of faith. Above all, I believe, help me to have faith that you are with me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's appreciate Jesus. Thank you.